We're going to go ahead and connect a toilet to a rain harvest system. I'm going to use polyethylene tubing available from any of your home supply stores, Home Depot or Lowe's, using these barbed fittings to make the connection. This is my collection system. Got gutters at the top, 500 gallon tank, collects, and at the bottom of it I've got a two-way valve. The blue tank on the right I use for capturing water for my garden, putting it in a bucket and hand watering. Uh, this valve allows me to control water going to the blue tank and uh, if I need to work on the toilet I can shut the valve off. Now what I've done with the polyethylene tubing to protect, protect it from abrasion and sunlight, I've gone ahead and used an old piece of garden hose and I've stuck it in the garden hose um, and that should give me enough protection, a little bit of freeze protection also, uh, but mostly to keep the UV off of it. And there it is, I've run it along the side of the house, kind of kept it out of the way. I've drilled a hole through the rock where I know the toilet is, about 8 inches off the ground. And there it is, that's the polyethylene tubing. Made a smaller hole, I'd have to use a much larger hole if I used the garden hose. Secure it to the floor so it doesn't get moved around, not a bad idea. There's the valve. The tubing comes through the rock and it penetrates through the sheet rock and then I've got my cutoff valve. You'll see the valve on the left. That's the uh, city supply. Do not cross contaminate. Do not connect the rainwater uh, to the city water in any shape, way or form. Um, not only is it contaminating your own water supply, but it's also highly against local codes. Here's the issue. The valves that I picked up, uh, this is the original valve, and that's a high pressure valve coming off of city water supply, which is probably about 040 to 80 psi. We've got to use a low pressure valve that you can get from farm and ranch supply uh, stores. Uh, I got mine on online. Can't remember. Maybe it was Amazon. They're not that expensive. Maybe eight, ten bucks for the valve. So the issue is the valve comes with a half inch standard thread, uh, pipe thread, and what you have to have is that v old valve uses a, it's, I think it's a 5 8 fitting, female fitting, and so we've got to go from half inch to 5 8 um, or a toilet connector. That's the trick. You can get a helicoil, a coil that goes into the female pipe and then it converts it from 5 eighths to half inch. I didn't have that. I didn't want to have to go to supply place. So I'm just going to use what I have and I have one of those old uh, flush valves and we're going to cut the end of it and thread it into the new valve. We're going to show a little... So that's the old system and that's where it connects. So I've got a flapperless tank and uh, the water it doesn't use a flapper it uses this the tank and so if you'll see this valve doesn't fit into that connector into that female thread so we're going to have to make some modifications on the new valve no problem because again remember the main thing you're dealing with you now you're dealing with a low pressure system instead of your city supplied high pressure system and the new valve, the old valve, will not function because there's not enough pressure to open up the flapper in the valve. So you can see there the difference between the thread that we need, which is on the right, and the thread that we have, which is the half inch on the left. So we're going to take that old valve, we're going to cut the thread off of it, and we're going to thread the inside of it and connect it to the new half inch valve. So I've got all kinds of plumbing supplies. So I, there's the valve, the old valve. We're cutting the end off. Remember, that's going to marry up perfectly with the connector in the tank. And we're going to have to thread the inside of that piece of pipe now and thread it into the new valve and then it'll connect.
that's my half inch pipe threader so what I've done so I don't bugger up the threads I'm using an old um, toilet connector screwing that little nipple into it so that it'll protect it because as I apply pressure something's got to hold that in place so that I can thread it from the inside and I don't want to screw up the threads because that's the part that's got to connect to the connector in the tank here it is fairly easy it is plastic um, I go in and out in and out with the threader and not try to thread it all at one time here it is there it is I've taken the piece and I've connected it up I've used the pair of pliers on it so even though that section that you're looking at next to the white Teflon tape is buggered up no worries that's not the part that gets threaded in and we got to make a little modification put that washer on and so there it is um, I've put the washer on I've put the new valve you can this little wing nut is where you can adjust the float that little plastic float you can either go up or down depending on uh, the water level desired and so here I've gone ahead and I'm letting the tank fill up and I'm going to see if if uh, we're in good shape now you do have to do a little bit of math make sure that that new valve will fit in this particular tank now maybe you've got a different tank you're gonna have to maybe get a different valve that's not a horizontal my my tanks in my house happen to be these uh, Niagara type toilets uh, the flapperless toilets so I've, I've had to use this horizontal um, flush valve they do make a similar one in a vertical application for vertical application which would be probably more more typical on a toilet but that's not what I've got in my house and that's not what this video is showing so there it is let's let's slowly watch it fill give it a test Right, filled up now you can see we've dumped the water the bowl has gone down opens up the valve and water comes streaming up remember it's not going to be a lot of pressure because it's gravity and so we're doing it's just testing it make sure that it's working so far so good and as that water level increases that valve will rise and it will put pressure and shut the valve off and so I would say this this worked out and was a success and I've been actually using this thing for almost two years now and uh, still works quite quite wonderfully um, I will advise do keep your tank clean because if you pick up debris leaves or other smack uh, it, it could plug up the valve but you know it's easy enough it's got one screw there you unscrew the valve and clean it out and, and you'll be back to business I've yet to have to do that I do have a screen at the top of my tank that collects most of it I'm checking here to make sure that there are no leaks looks good to me Again, I think it's a great way to use the harvesting of rain to not only oh, use it around the house but here you can actually save money from your utilities by using it for something practical like a toilet I mean they do certainly make whole house systems that you can be off the grid but that's that's not the scope of this video this is more for Oh, somebody who's looking at putting in a harvesting water harvesting system in your house and this is a good use a good application on how to connect it to a toilet and save some money wouldn't work on a second story all right thanks for watching remember to subscribe